very good day students today i want to say some lines regarding the epidermal glands before i stated about the some glands which are available in the epidermal region like mucous glands poison glands then femoral glands your photophorous or luminescent glands erythroidal glands etc today i will explain you about the sweat glands sebaceous glands sand glands lastly i explain you about the mammary glands you see the vertebrate organizing itself embedded by skin outwardly skin otherwise known as integument layer it also forms one system that is called as integumentary system if you reveal the integumentary system of the vertebrate organizing you must collect three layers in there outwardly you find one thin membranous dry but layer that is called as cutaneous layer which one derives from the uppermost part of the epidermis epidermis is a carnified layer this layer remains just beneath the cuticular layer under the cuticle you find the dermis and dermis remains under the epidermis it will be separated from the dermis epidermis separate from the dermis by the presence of one basement membrane but basement membrane would be considered as the layer of the epidermal layer these are the sub layers at the base you find the basement membrane which are giving the mechanical support to them your another layer which are remain above of it due to giving germination that is called as the your germinativum layer specifically known as malphigian layer or stratum germinativum all the times you can use stratum in layer stratum germinativum it will be remaining just above the basement membrane just above of that layer but the single layer of the your stratum germinativum or malphigian layer you find another multi layer also we remain that is called as the stratum corneum stratum corneum remains above under the feet you find stratum germinativum then under the feet you find the basement membrane you see the stratum corneum comprises one type of protein that is called as keratin under the process of keratinization it is going to be what a very hard cover or enclosure and membrane structure is going to be dead due to what the loss of the life of the cells and that layer comprising the keratin initially as a protein it would be keratinized and becoming hard and that layer as a remaining at the above of it as the name of the cuticle which are remaining just above the epidermis but at where keratin is remain as a living state and with that layer is called stratum corneum under length of it you find the stratum germinativum which is separated from the underlying dermis by the presence of the basement membrane and its cell actively divided and continuously adding the cells and the continually replace the worn out cells of the carnified layer if the some cells should be degenerated in there that cell also filled by the the new cells which are generally originated from the first stratum germinativum and stratum germinativum generally providing the new cells towards the your stratum corneum under the of it you find the basement membrane is there which will separate to the der dermis and the epidermis in comparison with the dermis is very thin in case of the aquatic vertebrate organisms but it is rich in the 
what mucus glands but which are the terrestrial animals you observe to them in there the epidermis is thicker and structures such as the scales feathers hairs nails claws horns and enamels of the teeth also be present in there as the derivatives generally they will be derived from the malpighian layers okay and in this manner the epidermis is differentiated from the dermis and dermis otherwise called as the corium layer dermis otherwise known as corium layer in there you find the your adipose sites or these are the fat cells also be noticed in there after there you find some cells which are generally comprising the pigments they also known as the melanocytes and melanocytes are the pigmented cells generally they are derived from the dermis and some scales and some plates also origin from there as a derivatives these are called terminal derivatives or dermal derivatives okay let's know about the what the glands which are available on the epidermal region these are called as epidermal glands these are the derivatives of the epidermal region and on that base i also explain the your near about 4 to 5 different glands named as the mucous glands then your poisonous glands then you find luminescent glands or photophores and you also know they are the femoral glands i already covered to them and eropygial glands which are noticed in the bats body and next the gland is named as sweat glands this is the summer season you people lose some water from your body on the body surface and that is nothing that is called as sweat sweat generally comes out from the body surface and that sweat comprises the some amount of urea and sodium chloride like this also some salts and they will be eliminated out from the body by evaporation you can feel the cool and generally that fluid like substance when boost at the time of summer it can maintain the proper temperature of your body and today i shall explain you about this sweat glands which one consider as one epidermal glands of the higher vertebrate group of animals sweat glands otherwise called as your sudoriferous glands sudoriferous glands sudor means sweat sudor means sweat and they are the slender coil tubular embedded deep in the dermis in the last diagram i will show so that one with their long dots opening on the skin surface and through the sweat urea must be eliminated with some salts like the sodium chloride also be eliminated in dissolved state in water and that one called as the sweat sweat produced by these glands so they, these glands are called as sweat glands by evaporation of the watery perspiration also helps to cool and regulate the body temperature in hot environment i repeatedly explain to you same thing and sweat glands are absent in spiny scaly ant eaters ant eaters would not possess sweat glands in their bodies because they are bodies embedded by the scaly like substance spiny like substances in outwardly there is no question of the gaseous exchange would be happening in there okay and the skin is not able to perform in the part shooting process and should or not be which out from their bodies after that the marine forms which are generally remaining in the vast ocean body or water bodies or sea waters examples are the belonging to the two groups one is called as sirenia other one is known as cetacea the in this two orders the organisms are not possessing the sweat glands if they are mammal they would not be what possessing the sweat glands like the sea lion sea cow or i'll show you blue whale dolphin etc 
they have no sweat glands because they are marine animals they would not possess the sweat glands in their bodies okay sweat glands only restricted the mammals which are terrestrial by nature the distributed is restricted in there and they may occur only on the shores of feet like the cats and mice leaves in case of the rabbits and mujel and the skin between the toes of the ruminant animals and the sides of the head in the bats and ears in case of the hippopotamus hippopotamus you know hippopotamus is a gigantic aquatic animal and that animal possesses a pair of external pinna to listen the sounds only that species possesses pinna but remains in the what water body that is named as hippopotamus okay in odia that is that animal is called chola hasti hippopotamus etc generally possessing the what the your sweat glands then male giant kangaroos male giant kangaroos who named geologically called as the macropos rufus macropos is the generic name rufus is the specific name that kind of organizing would not possess the sweat glands due to remaining in the land or a terrestrial habitat but have no ability to release the sweat from their bodies and another animal that one remaining in the water body i already depicted that name that is called hippopotamus hippopotamus also be what secreting the sweat but not exactly sweat like us the sweat color is red in color okay your macropos rufus that animal would not secret like the sweat of us that one also be eliminate or secret the sweat which color is red red color sweat generally release from their bodies and only these two animals are possessing the red sweats and generally they would be released out or secret from the body surface like the example your kangaroo as well as the your hippopotamus which are in color in odia chola asti and ciliary glands also be noticed in our body just at the eyelashes and along the margin of the eyelids and these are modified of the sweat glands sweat glands generally remaining in the two forms and your named as the chiloriferous glands and giving the sweat which are also giving one type of play smell and another one is called as ciliary glands which you have noticed at the your eye margins or the eyelid margin you find there and they are giving the secretion and that is called as the that gland is called as ciliary glands however these are the modification of the sweat glands okay you already know about the sweat glands the glands which you are able to secrete sweat called as sweat glands it is nothing it is a derivative of the epidermal glands or epidermis okay epidermis comprises the different types of the derivatives and epidermal glands are is one example of it under the epidermal glands your sweat gland is one type of it next we i will explain you about the sebaceous glands sebaceous s e b a c e o u s sebaceous glands and sebaceous glands generally secrete a grease like substance from its body that you will be discuss that is called as sebum s e b u m the sebum due to secretion of the sebum those glands are called as sebaceous glands which are also be considered as the epidermal glands because they will be remaining in the epidermis of the vertebrate kind of organisms so it is one epidermal derivatives these are branched alveolar 
glands opening into the hair follicle hair follicles of the mammals they may be open directly into the surface such as around the genital openings tip of the nose or the edge of the leaves in there you find the sebaceous glands they are oily by nature in comparison with the sweat sweat is the watery like but your sebaceous glands giving the secretion that is sebum that is the oily like secretion and that oily like secretion called as what in the term of sebum s e b u m you see after the sweat glands you know about the sebaceous glands sebaceous glands okay it is like the sweat glands but in the in comparison with two the sebaceous glands secretes one viscous type of body fluid and that is called as sebum that is named as sebum sebaceous glands secretes one type of secretion which is greasy by nature called as sebum okay due to secrete the sebum the gland is known as sebaceous glands if you refer to the sebaceous glands of the vertebrate kind of organism these are branched and alveolar glands opening into the hair follicles of the mammals they may be open directly into the surface such as around the genital organs and tip of the nose or the edge of the leaves and their only secretion that is named as what sebum what is it sebum sebum is a greasy like substance spelling greasy g r e a s e greasy or sebum a c b u m sebum is nothing it is greasy like substance and that keep the skin and hair soft greasy and waterproof and glistening all the times the hair which are remain in our body surface looks like black due to giving the what giving the greasy like substance named as sebum sebaceous glands absent in pangolins pangolins in it you find the your ant eater and it are generally embedded by the scaly like substance spine like substance on the body surface there is no question of the gaseous exit in there there is no question of the secretion of the sweat in there to maintain the body temperature properly okay and this animal has no question to secrete the sebum by the help of sebaceous glands that is also absent in the ant eater which are belongs under the what pangolins and also marine species like your mammal your bat your blue whale dolphin sea cow sea lion those animals are not possessing the sebaceous glands in their bodies okay these are lacking and you know the marine mammals generally remaining in the two group of orders one is called as sirenia i will publish it to you another order is called as cetacea c e t a c e a which are practically devoid of the hairs due to absence of the hairs there is no question of the sebaceous glands in there and you also find one modification sebaceous glands in our body at the place of the your external ear whenever you can enter your finger to the what your auditory meters and you move your finger in there you find a particular like substance will be stick on your finger tip that is nothing that is called as cerumen and the glands which are secreted in the cerumen called as the ceruminous glands ceruminous glands because they are secreting cerumen कानरे जो आंगुठी भर्ती करले आंगुठी बुलेइ देले तो कानर से भीतर जो मळी भळिया गले जिंस आसी आंगुठी टिपरे लागि जाय से जो आंगुठी टिपरे जो लागुत बा जिंस बडा को जो अठाया जिंस बडा बा को जो सेरुमेन आ से सेरुमेन बाहर थुबा ग्रंथि आमे कहुचो ताको कोन कहुचो ना सेरुमिनस ग्लांस इट इज ए मॉडिफिकेशन ऑफ द सेबासियस ग्लांस 
okay they are waxy or greasy secretion you know and due to this account they call as the cerumen and helps to trap the insects or dust particles and due to this account and the gland would be named as the ceruminous glands because they are giving the secretion cerumen understand then you find similarly another gland that is also modification of the sebaceous glands named as the meobion meobion a m e i b o m i a n meobion glands like the sebaceous glands and due to secreting the cerumen cerumen due to secreting the cerumen the gland is known as ceruminous glands glands should be called as ceruminous glands ceruminous glands which will be secreting the cerumen and due to secreting cerumen that is called as ceruminous glands it is nothing it is a modification of your sebaceous glands and you see after that the sweat glands are should be modified in another form that is called as meobium M E I B O M Okay I A N M E I O B Okay spelling is little bit taken here please let me find it M E I B M I B O M I N. Okay, the right spelling of the meobium M E I B O M I A N. That one is called as meobium, and the meobium will be secreting from one gland. That gland will be called as meobium gland m e i b o m i a s meobium gland okay this gland secreting this type of per secretion it is oil like secretion that is called as the meobium and generally they will be secreted from the eyelids okay and which the spread their oily secretion over the exposed surface of the eyeball or their modification of the what your sebaceous glands sebaceous glands can be remain in our body after the what your sebaceous glands in two forms other one is called as the meobium gland another one is called as ceruminous glands And in ceruminous glands, it secretes cerumen. In meobium glands, it secretes the meobium secretion. And these are the derivatives of the sebaceous glands. Then, nextly, I will explain you about the a scent glands. Scent that means it is giving one type of smell which are attracts to the others. That is called as scent glands. Scent is very much interest gas-like substance. and generally it can motivate it to others and likely some deers also generally producing that smell that is called as musk deer or the odia that animal is called as kasturi mruga in that species you mark one type of smell come from the navan region of this animal but that animal when secretion comes out and that animal can move here and there to know what is the exact position of the smell in which area 
is already smelled and which place it, it can remain and the animal generally try to know about it and that gland is known as your scent glands. Some mammals, some other animals also secreting such type of secretion that is called as scent and scent generally possessing by some glands, the glands which are generally possessing the scent, it will be called as scent glands. And these are the modification either of the sebaceous or your pseudoriferous glands of the mammals. But these glands order is very attractive to the partner to mating and their odorous secretion serves to the repel, the push or attract the part, members of the opposite sex. Sometimes that scent glands also producing such a environment, the partner would be attracted towards it. And secondly, some enemies also lead to the organism. They will not be creating any problems to that kind of organism. Because smell is not appealing, it is giving the fouling scent. And due to secretion of that scent, automatically that animal which will try to eat to them, afford to eat. Okay? And their order secretion serves to be but your repel, repel force, okay, and some cases also be attract the members of the opposite sex for cohabitation. And shed glands may occur between the toes or feet, like the goat, rhino, husk. You see, the goat when coming to be more mature, it also producing one scent. And the male goat and the rhino also producing such type of scent, such type of smell. Horse, male horse also producing such type of smell. You see, they give giving the very peculiar smells. And that is not so, but attractive. Somewhere also, we, it is also giving, giving the irritation to the partner or to the inmates. Near the eyes on the head, near the eyes on the head, the dear family, the you find the what? Your scent glands. And scent glands also be remaining in the abdomen, like the musk deer at the place of the navel. And we do on the back of the kangal, rats named as the dipodamis. And around the anus, the songs and many carnivorous and rodents, etc. And due to secretion of that smell from the anus, other organisms which are generally abhorred to them. Okay? They cannot eat to that species. Okay? Because it is producing very plague in the air. And in a chew, you can mark the foul odors may not be the touch to the unhygienic conditions but caused by the, the sweat glands of the mammals in the Pains and cages, these are the dwelling place of the, the animals, then they will be remaining within them and in that area will be very unshabby conditions that is not healthy atmosphere, unhygienic state and this is possible only by the secretion of this foul odor or from the cell plants. Okay? And cell plants also help in the two ways. To attract the partner, secondly, it will be held to the safe from the dangers or predators. Then come to the know about the mammary glands. Mammary glands generally you find in the higher group of mammals, and by them the organism can nourish to the ants, and it is the characteristics of the mammals. These are compound tubular glands that produce the milk during the lactation period for the feeding of the young ones. Usually, they occur on the females. Male will not be produce the, the fruitful mammary glands. Mammary glands remaining in peristates, they have no ability to synthesizing the milk in there. 
but female one generally synthesizing milk in their glands and by then the female one nourishes to the young and pot are also be present on males in specifically monotremics and primates and some others and in monotremics the mammary glands lack nipples then no nipples nipples makes convenient to nourish to the young and it would be possessed by the female one and these are also be called as the traits and resembles the modification of the sweat glands in other mammals the possesses the nipples and are modifiers your sebaceous glands how we have mammary glands are the modification of the sweat glands as well as also the sebaceous glands and by the generally the mammary glands also well developed in the female organism they would be help to nourish into the young the distribution and number of the mammary glands and the nipples is very very with the species and a nipple is a raised in a conical or elongated elevation of the body surface bearing the opening of the milk glands a true trace like in case of the example man and nipples ducts of the mammary glands open separately on the nipple in false traces you find in the uncoagulates okay or uncoagulates animals and all ducts empty into the one cisterns from which the single tube leads to the the nip of the nipple you refer the your mammary glands it is more or less conical like structures outwardly and you mark here you find the one treat and also nipple and it is the only way so this way generally the ducts will be open to externally they are arising arise, arise from the alveolar sac like structures of the mammary glands and through them generally milk can reaches to the outer environment this portion is called as the nipple or also be called as trait okay and that can be noticed very well in case of the female organisms especially in the mammals in other animals also you find the mammary glands and not as a pair you find more than one pair in case of human female you find a pair of what mammary glands after her you find other species like the cat or also in case of the rat or also in case of dog you find number of the mammary glands and they also open outwardly through the nipple and true nipple must be noticed a true trait must be noticed especially in case of man and the apes and ducts of the mammary glands open separately from the nipple but false trait generally you can find an ungul ungulates ungulates the organisms generally false trait that also be remaining in there all ducts empty into the cisterns from which a the single tube leads to the the tip of the nipple however in this manner the mammary glands also be help to the particular kind of organisms and these nine types of the glands available in the epidermal regions and they would be considered as the epidermal glands okay they would be available as the derivative of the epidermal layer thank you very much